Hello everybody, welcome back to the table. Today we are taking a look at a brand new knife from Kershaw. This one right here happens to be an exclusive from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And this here is the Kershaw Highball XL. And so of course the original Highball XL is not exactly a brand new knife, but this particular model is actually special because it is a titanium frame lock. So not only is it a titanium frame lock, but we also get some high-end steel on this knife. This knife is sporting some CPM S35VN. And so I think what this knife represents is a bigger thing than just one exclusive, you know, a one-off knife. It's the fact that when you think of Kershaw as a brand, what do they offer? You know, the Kershaw brand itself, most of their knives are going to be in the $100 or less range. And I would say the majority of those knives, they are budget folders. You know, most of them $40 and under, um, foreign produced. And when you get to the higher priced Kershaw branded knives, you start to run into the Kershaw USA made line. And so those knives run up to around $100. Usually that's where they top out with, of course, a few exceptions. But there's a gap because if you want a quality Kershaw made knife, you don't really have anything above that price point until you jump to zero tolerance or ZT knives. And those of course are going to be well over $200, $300 a piece. So what Kershaw is currently missing right now is that gap in the market that wants a high end knife over a hundred dollars, less than $200. And so this knife right here is kind of one of the first that I've really seen in this vein that fit that bill. And of course, if you if I'm forgetting anything, feel free to comment below. Let me know your thoughts and what I am forgetting. But the reason for that is, of course, this is the Kershaw Highball. This is the XL version, so it's slightly larger than the original. And this knife is made in China. I will be very upfront. This is a Chinese produced knife, but it has the higher end materials that we expect out of something like ZT. So the titanium frame lock, the S35 VN steel, the bearings, the style. I think what they're going for here is that middle market price range. And I really do like it when companies, production companies especially, like Kershaw, like CRKT, when they're aiming for this range. You know, Boker does it well. They've been doing something similar to this for years. They're aiming for between, you know, the $100, $150 price point and providing great value at that price point with these knives that, of course, are going to be foreign produced. So if you demand US made Kershaw's, they are certainly there and they are waiting for you and ready for you. Um, but with the higher end materials, if you want them at that same price point, that's when you start approaching zero tolerance prices. So what this Kershaw Highball XL really is showing is that Kershaw is willing to embrace that middle market. They're going to go with foreign produced knives that are not budget. You know, these are for the, the mid to high end collectors who want something nice, something that's usable, but will provide higher performance for that slightly higher price. So, of course, I just had to say all of that. But this knife right here and now I will I'll be honest, I never owned the original Highball or the Highball XL that were the lower end produced models. Um, but this one right here, the Highball XL with titanium, um, it's a very well made knife holding it in my hand, I'm kind of looking for faults with it. Um, and of course, the original version of this knife had, was a steel frame lock with D2 steel, which of course in itself is a good value. Um, but with the S35VN right here, of course, the, the steel is going to be slightly higher performing. Um, the titanium frame lock saves more than an ounce of weight off of the original knife. So this knife right here weighs in at 2.8 ounces for the same 3.3 inch blade. Um, overall length here of about 7.6 inches and it does of course run on bearings and that's one of the nice things about this knife is that it's not an assisted opener because I think when you get to a certain price point of knife you really expect it to be something manually opened and not have the blingy you know spring assist action that um, really quantifies a budget knife and so this blade does run on bearings super smooth right out of the box um, also kind of differentiated from standard titanium frame locks, even today, uh, it's not a flipper. So there is this long fuller in the blade, and you can use that to open slowly with your thumb. You can flick it out with your thumb. 
if you've got the dexterity, you could do that spidey type flick with your, you know, your middle finger. Um, but it's a very, very nice design. So this is one of the designs that I saw Kershaw come out with when it was in the original materials. But it just didn't really speak to me because, again, do I really need another steel frame lock? Do I really need another D2 blade? Um, the design looked good, and I knew it would be a good knife. But I'm glad I waited till I saw this one available because the blade of the knife, this nice clip point, big belly on it, very attractive. Um, we have the Kershaw logo up here on the front. And uh, the reverse side, of course, has the model name, which as of when I ordered this knife, I, Google was search was uh, sorry Google was turning up no search results for the 7020 Ti. So hopefully that'll change as this knife is more widely produced. So we have the model number, the 7020 Ti, uh, Kai CPM S35 VN steel. We have the little mark on there that signifies this is a Kershaw in-house design. And of course the China marking on there because of course these are foreign produced knives. And so for the price point we're at, this knife came in at around $130. Um, we are getting these premium materials because it is made in China. So for better or for worse, you should pretty much expect that <laughs> from a knife like this. Um, in terms of uh, centering, you can check out the centering of the blade right here. It is nice and centered. The lockup is nice and early, so I don't think there's going to be any issues with that. Um, like any titanium frame lock, we have the lock bar insert right there, and that is steel, and it also has the built-in over-travel stop. And that is one slight difference between this one and the steel frame lock version. Um, the steel frame lock version did have an over-travel stop that was slightly more stylized, but we just don't need it when you have a titanium frame lock with that already built into the lock bar insert. So there is that one change there. Um, what we also get on this knife, though, we get a nice deep carry pocket clip and you can see it is a loop over clip the the actual clip screws are nice and flush with the handle and it is reversible so you can see um, for left or right hand carry you're going to have tip up carry with this knife and it's actually kind of nice this is a nice ambidextrous knife because as you can see the opening method is essentially equally accessible on both sides you know what's also really nice about that nice fuller that's cut out into the blade when you look at the spine, I, I like the decoration and the look of it. It almost gives it somewhat of a harpoon swedge near the top, and that guides right into the jimping, which we do get kind of a nice long stretch of jimping. I don't know if it's all necessary, but very, very appreciated to see that. And with this version of the knife, it is a titanium frame lock, but the hardware here is, is steel. Um, so the, the pivot screw, the two body screws, they are this bronze color, but those are steel. Um, I kind of do wish that they made the pocket clips that color as well, or the pocket clip screws that color as well, so it would all match. Um, but it, it, it does add a little bit of a touch of style to what would otherwise be, you know, a gray knife. <laughs> because as you can see, um, the blade here, it has kind of like a light stone wash finish on it, which again, I really appreciate. I'm not a huge fan of bead blast. And uh, satin is fine, but satin also picks up fingerprints like crazy. So this is just a nice little stone wash blade. Um, overall, really an ideal knife. And again, I'm sure other reviewers said the same thing about the highball when it was originally released in, you know, with steel and D2. Um, but I feel that now that we have this upgrade, if you're willing to spend a little more than a U.S. made Kershaw, but not quite as much as you would spend on a USA made ZT, we have this knife right here that, in my opinion, kind of fills that gap. So while this one here is an exclusive to Smoky Mountain Knife Works, I'm hoping that they kind of take this idea and run with it. I would love to see more of these Chinese designs that they have because they're not all bad designs. Kershaw has come out with a lot of really innovative designs in the past year or two, but I'd love to see them reborn with the higher end materials. Um, and I think this, I think really do think that's the way to go. And as evidenced, unfortunately, as of making this video, the Ker the Kershaw Highball XL here in titanium, it is out of stock. So I'm hoping it comes back soon. I'm hoping either this knife or some other variants of these higher end Chinese made knives do come back because I, of course it's sold out. So there's obviously a distinct market for these things. And so of course I do want to thank because this knife was totally off my radar um, until there were actually a few posts on uh, Reddit's, I think it was Knife Club, um, who, of people who saw this and posted it to mention it. So like, hey, where did this knife come from type of a deal? <laughs> uh, 
Um, so I do appreciate people posting about this. Otherwise, I would have had no clue it even existed. And maybe many of you out there had no clue this variant of the knife existed. So for all I know, this might not be a new knife. It may have been out here for a while, and I just picked up on it now. Um, but I am glad to share it with you because I hope, Kershaw, if you are watching, please start going this direction. It's great to have the foreign-made budget line, but let's start bringing up the value and bringing up the materials level of those same models, and I think they're going to sell really well. And I really do point that out because, of course, I love my USA-made Kershaws. Do not get me wrong. I'm a collector of those. But they don't make many of those nowadays. And the ones they do make are the same models they've made for the past, you know, 10, 15 years, really. Um, and so when we, where we're seeing innovation right now are on the foreign-made models. So why not make them out of better materials? So that's kind of my rant right there. Let me know what you think. Should Kershaw really be focusing on these high-end foreign-made models? I think it's a pipe dream to assume that if that that they'll bring back high-end U.S.-made production knives, that that ship seems to have sailed, um, unless you're looking for a ZT knife. But it's a really an interesting topic, interesting point of conversation. So I'm hoping to hear from all of you and see what you think. I know I'm kind of rambling at this point, <laughs> um, but I really did want to share my thoughts and opinions with all of you guys. So let me know what you think about Kershaw and this new direction that I'm hoping they are headed in. Hope you all have a nice day, everybody. See you later.